Gogglehead, the unifying banner under which many Digimon protagonists are put together. All the way back from V Tamer right up to the modern day, Goggles are an integral part of many Digimon characters. And on today's video, I'm going to be ranking my top 10 Goggleheads. What is up everybody, welcome back to another video, and yes, it's time to list my top 10 Goggleheads. Now, I'm being very stringent here. For example, I will not be counting Marcus Damon or Masaru from Digimon Saver slash Data Squad. I'd love to, but he never wears goggles. But I am, in this whole top 10, going to include characters that have ever worn goggles in Digimon. So there may be some controversies on the list, these are just my favourite characters. Without further ado, let's list those goggles. Now, in at number 10, as I say, is a bit of a technicality. And that is why I've only put him at number 10. It's Matt in Digimon Adventure Tri. Now, <laughs> for a bit in Tri, when Ty goes running off into the, let's say into the woods. Yeah, Ty ran off into the woods. Matt did get his goggles, which meant that Matt was a gogglehead for some of Tri. And that's kind of like the symbolism they were going for and that they're both kind of candidates for leadership of the Digidestin. So I'm including Matt here. I absolutely adore Matt. Of course I do. He's great in Digimon Adventure Zero Two. There are parts of Tri that I really enjoy him in and there's parts that I really don't. Really comes together in Last Evolution Kizuna, so the fact that symbolically he actually got to wear goggles and become a gogglehead, I think is actually kind of a huge moment, but obviously he spends a lot of his time in the Digimon franchise not being a gogglehead, so while as a character I'd rank him way higher, as a gogglehead I'm gonna place him lower. If you don't agree with me putting on this list he is a gogglehead, just sub in someone from the video games, the protagonist from the Cyber Sleuth games. <laughs> Spoilers, they're not gonna be on this list. <laughs> In at number 9 is Mikey or Taiki from Digimon Fusion, and I think he's a protagonist that gets a lot less love than he deserves. I have not finished Cross Wars and I haven't even seen the next protagonist after Taiki, but I just like him and honestly, one of the few protagonists after, like, Davis that I really enjoy dubbed too. I think Mikey really works. As I'm starting to go through Cross Wars and you will see more Cross Wars content as I'm watching it, I'm really appreciating the kind of levels to him. And he's not the most complex protagonist ever, but I think you can see in Cross Wars where they've looked to the past, where they've looked to Ty and Davis and to Kato, even to Koya a little bit, maybe even a little bit of Marcus, and really kind of distilled their energies into this new gogglehead. So he's in no way the best protagonist we've ever had. I think he's really strong, and I think hopefully, again, as I delve further into his season, I'll see that start to mature, but he's made such a good impression on me. I have to love him, and that's why he's my number nine. All right, in at number eight is Rina Shinamiya from Digimon World Redigitized Decode. Now, I'm not gonna go super into spoilers here, but if you, spoiler warning, I'm not gonna go into tons of spoilers here, but this segment is gonna feature spoilers for Digimon World Redigitized Decode, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, and Digimon World Next Order. Minor spoilers, like I say, but skip to this timestamp if you don't wanna see them. So Rina is really interesting to me. I don't think she has the same level of depth that people further up on this list have, but Rina is kind of, uh, Digimon video games answer to Ryo Akiyama. She gets a partner Vimon, which is a big calling card of things like obviously Taichi from V Tamer and Daisuke, and again shows up in Cyber Sleuth and Next Order very prominently outside of her own game. She now has cards in the official card game, other appearances in other side games and things like that, and just in general has become a really strong force and something that her kind of male equivalent can't say. While Tiger is the protagonist character of the kind of redigitized series, he only shows up in in those games. He did of course get his own card also in the Digimon card game, but I think that just illustrates how different the two are, that they are considered the representation of Digimon World Redigitized, and yet Rina has way more appearances. And I'm really excited to see more from her. I'm really hoping that if, when Digimon Survive comes out, we get a cameo from Rina Shinomiya. In at number seven is Daigo Nishijima from Digimon Adventure Tri. Now again, this entry has spoilers for Digimon Tri. If you don't want to see those, skip ahead again. Timestamp on screen, or there will be a timestamp in the description that you can click to. So Daigo, one of few characters I legitimately really enjoy in Digimon Adventure Tri. I think he was kind of a breath of fresh air and I really enjoyed him. My only real criticism is I kind of wish we'd have seen him as a character in at least Zero Two, but obviously they weren't planning for Tri, so I can forgive it. I think it would have worked out a lot better if a character like Daigo was behind 
perhaps a character we'd already seen, maybe one of the teachers in Adventure Zero Two, maybe one of the parents, something like that. But regardless, and now the big spoilers for Try. He's an original Digi Destin, <laughs> and I love this concept. It's one of the things that I was always hoping that Adventure would explore more ever since they talked about it back in Digimon Adventure and showed the silhouettes of the kids that looked exactly like Ty and his group, but they weren't supposed to be. And so I did love that Try explored this. Also, Daigo gets a Bearmon as a partner, <laughs> which again is awesome because Bearmon is one of those Digimon that I've always wanted to have a really decent partner, and it's only really recently in Try and Rearize that that has been happening. Still wish he was like a main anime protagonist partner, but it'll do. There is a great deal of tragedy to Daigo's story, which I appreciate, and while Try really got me down with the tragedy and the oh, ow, the edge stuff, I still enjoyed Daigo and his sort of mix of seriousness and levity, his ability to laugh and to teach and instruct, and also obviously his childhood as an original Digi Destined, informing so much of who he was. Our time with Daigo was brief, although Try felt like a slog at times, but he's one of the few characters that I wish we'd seen more of, and again, huge spoilers for Try, I did warn you, his death actually kind of impacted me, or at least his apparent death. So yes, Daigo, while not part of a Digimon media that I am super in love with, I think was kind of a shining example of a character I really liked. And it goes to show for me, and I think hopefully for you, even in things that you don't like in the franchise, whether it be Try, Last Evolution Kizuna, or even the new season of the anime, I think there's always something to like there. I have a very pizza is pizza approach to Digimon, even bad pizza is still pizza, and even bad Digimon is still Digimon. So yeah, Daigo, you're a good gogglehead, and I salute you. In at number six is Takuya from Digimon Frontier. I know, I know Frontier is polarizing. A lot of people don't like Frontier. A lot of people that do like Frontier love Frontier. I just think there's something about Takuya that's a little bit more iconic to me and kind of, if we're stepping him up against a lot of other leaders, I think he stands out a lot more. I'm not gonna dive into huge spoilers for Frontier here, but he presents himself very well. And also if we're counting his evolution line, which we can for him, he has one of my favorite lines in that whole show. As I said before, I'm not like the hugest fan of Frontier in the world, but I think Frontier's characters are some of the strongest in the whole franchise. I just think there's a great level of depth to Takoya, and especially when we then look into things like the CD dramas and movies, there's just a lot there. In at number five is Sarugi Tatsuno from Digimon Next. And while I've been spoiling things in this video, I'm gonna need to be 100 with you right now. I don't want to talk about Digimon Next right now. And why is that? I'm starting a new series on this channel, coming soon. It will not be beginning with Digimon Next, but it will be beginning with a different manga. Uh, I'm gonna be going through a manga retrospective of all the Digimon manga because I feel like Digimon manga has just not been explored as much in Digimon content, I think, in comparison to the anime and even the video games. And there's a lot of cool stuff in Digimon Next that I really want to talk about, but I want to save for my retrospective and also not spoil people. I've been reading so much Digimon manga this month. What I will say about Sarugi is I think he is criminally underrated and underrepresented in the fan base. He's not one you're going to see tons of fan art for, nor one that people are going to be like, oh, he's a sleeper hit. Everyone always talks about Vite Mataichi, but honestly, Sarugi is one of my favorite protagonists in manga history, or at least in Digimon manga history. He's also one of few manga protagonists who have the honor of appearing in a video game. Even Taichi Vite I can't say that. And so I just wish there was more love for Sarugi. He's super strong. I think he is definitely an echo of Vitae Mataichi, but there's so much more to him. And I like that he gets an Agumon as well. It really makes him feel like he's part of that history, that legendary lineup of Goggleheads. In at number four, the controversy is just beginning now, is Takato from Digimon Tamers. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna want him higher on the list, maybe even a number one, but I just, I couldn't put him there. And the reason is solely, he kind of annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> I love Digimon Tamers, but I do find a lot of the time, both in sub and dub, Takato to be a really weak link. When he is strong, he is so strong, but when he's weak, I think he's one of the weaker Goggleheads. Don't get me wrong, he's not bad. He's in a top 10, which means he's top 10 protagonists, you know, top 10 Goggleheads for sure. And there's at least 10 more that definitely didn't make the list, mostly protagonist video game characters. But to me, my favorite character in Tamers is Henry. I even prefer Rika to Takato. While I'd say Takato is a little strong 
longer than maybe Kenta and Kazu. I even think, to be honest, Takato gets showed up by Ryo in his own season. <laughs> the strong parts of Takato, his like fierce loyalty, his courage, which I think gets demonstrated. He doesn't officially have the crest of courage, but I think you can definitely see it there. And he does have good leadership skills, but I just find when he has his weak moments, they're a drag to get through, which I can't say for others that are higher up on the list. No disrespect to Takato at all. I wouldn't have his Digivice if I didn't love him, but he's just not quite a top three for me. But maybe he could be. Who knows? Maybe in the audio drama that they're doing for the next Digifez in August, we'll, uh, we'll get some more stuff about Takato that'll make him A tier for me, but we'll see. All right, my number three is Davis from Digimon Adventure Zero Two, and I don't think this is a shock to anyone. I am absolutely a Davis Chad. Well, I'm actually a Ken Virgin, but Ken isn't a gogglehead. <laughs> Davis is a character that I absolutely adore, and I get that he is annoying to some people. He comes off as kind of stupid and silly, but again, I just love him. And while, okay, yes, as I've gotten older, I can see more of the criticisms and why people don't like him, he's the second ever gogglehead I ever saw. He's the one that I have the most attachment to, he has plot lines deeply enriched with Ken, who's probably my favorite Digimon character of all time. I love the idea of someone representing crests that were originally unique to two characters in one. And while at times, yeah, he's hot-headed and stupid and acts out, I think he really does embody courage and friendship in really good ways. And again, he's far from perfect, and I think... Ken and TK take my favorite characters in Zero Two. Davis represents Zero Two to me, and I adore that season. And honestly, I love him. I love his whole thing. I love his noodle cart. I love his dumb stuff in Last Evolution Kizuna. And that's why it kind of broke my heart how dirty they treated him and the rest of his team in Try. And that's why I think I fell in love deeper with Davis because I wanted more for him. And retroactively going back and rewatching Zero Two, he's really good. He's good. And that's all you need to be a protagonist in Digimon is to believe in goodness and to act on goodness. And even if at times you're selfish and stupid, ultimately you come through. And that's why I love Davis Motomiya. Or Daisuke Motomiya. He's always gonna be Davis to me, I'm sorry. And at number two, Taichi from Digimon Adventure. The original one, not 2020. He didn't make the list. I'm sure you can tell why. Tai is the anime OG. He's the best. His moments of leadership and courage and perseverance are so strong. And also so are his weak moments, the moments where he forces things like Skull Greymon, or when he returns to the real world by himself, and that whole sad episode with Kari. There is such depth and complexity to Tai, and what's truly beautiful about him is obviously we get the full run of him in Digimon Adventure. We see more of him in his movies, both the movie that is a prequel to Adventure and our war game. Then leading into Zero Two, he's strong again. He grows up more, and then try I have my issues with how Ty and Matt are in Tribe, but... And then ultimately, we see him in Last Evolution Kizuna. And I'm not going to spoil Last Evolution Kizuna. But for me, Ty is the one that's always been around, you know? He, he's the mascot protagonist. And I've grown with him, I think. And while Zero Two is my favorite season, Adventure is the first one I ever saw. The one that I'd always go back to. It's the one that has the most merch. It's the one that gets rebooted. It's the one that gets Try and Last Evolution Kizuna. And Ty is always part of that. His legendary status, I think, has to... To put him high up on this list, but he's not number one. And that is because number one is Taichi from V Tamer. Now this may sound controversial. Does it sound like I'm a bit of a ooh edgelord who thinks the manga's better? No. Honestly, it's really tough for me whether Taichi V Tamer or Taichi Adventure gets number one on this list. Ultimately, I've gone with V Tamer. Just because I think Taichi V Tamer is a much more condensed version of the Taichi and Adventure. I think there's a lot more that's explored with Adventure Tai because he's had so much more screen time. But I think what you get from V Tamer Tai is the purest sense of the gogglehead in action. He is a great leader. He can be childish and selfish, but also knows when to get his act together and try better. He's a good partner for Zero Maru. He's a great friend to the Digimon he meets along the way, and he refuses to give up at any corner. No matter how much you back him into that corner, he is always going to fight back. He's always going to find a way, and he's always going to make sure those around him are okay when he does so. I'm going to be talking about V-Tamer at some point in an upcoming video, but V-Tamer Taichi, to me, ticks every box. I don't think there's a single bad moment for V-Tamer Taichi that I recommend. And I was like, oh, that seems out of character. That seems weird. Every single page with Vitae Taichi, he is his most brilliant self. Not his most perfect self, because he's flawed. He makes mistakes. He pushes Zero Maru too far. His tactical thoughts are not always the best, but when he gets there and when he nails it, 
He is truly phenomenal. I think something that makes their relationship unique that I think that even Tai and Agumon or Davis and Vimon don't have is that Taichi had the opportunity to give up on Zero Maru many times, both in the real world and in the digital world, and didn't. And I don't think that Tai and Davis would either, but they didn't have as much opportunity to do that. When you're already in the digital world and your partner is flesh and blood, it's a lot harder to give them up. But when they're just a little V-pet in a little toy, give that up. Who cares about my glitch Digimon? But he didn't. He stuck by him, right to the end. And that's why I love Vitae Mataichi. And that's why he is my favorite goggle head. All right, that was the list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know your top 10 goggleheads down below. I tried not to spoil too much on this list, so I did go a little bit light on some of them, but hopefully it gave you a good idea. This was a tough list. This is one that's been requested by a lot of people, and I wanted to do it just to kind of prove that I could, but I will admit it was tough. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Please do check out my merch, by the way. Uh, we have got wonderful merch, the We Move merch, featuring me and my personal creature, Hiraithmon, designed by Soru. Hoodies, mugs all sorts of other stuff. No sponsors this video. Would just be really cool if you checked out the merch. And let's thank some channel members. My Digi Destin level channel members, Triple D, Knight12, Andrew Sobel, Sad Uncle Callum, Crimson Dragon Slayer, and Anthony Bontamasi. Thank you, Digi Destin, you're amazing. And my Tamer level channel members, Errant Harpy, NQG420, The Blessed Rain, Sam Mallow, Nagel, Emily, John Hawkins, Mike McNulty, Theo Navarro, and Reese Williams. Tamers, my hats are off to you, or I guess my goggles. And to everyone in the Khan Club, thank you so much for supporting the channel and getting early access to all my videos. And I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye-bye.